Yes, China's biggest chipmaker, SMIC, is now the third largest foundry in the world, according to CounterPoint Research. Despite U.S. sanctions, SMIC, or Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, has increased its market share to 6% in the first quarter, up from 5% last year. It has overtaken Global Foundries and Taiwan's United Microelectronics Corporation. SMIC's quarterly results exceeded market expectations, securing the number three spot in foundry revenue market share for the first time in Q1 2024, as demand in China starts to recover. This puts SMIC behind only Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, and South Korea's Samsung Foundry, which had 62% and 13% market share, respectively. Although TSMC is still the largest chipmaker with 62% market share, it's clear that SMIC is growing quickly. In the first quarter, SMIC reported revenue of $1.75 billion, a 19.7% increase from the previous year as customers stocked up on chips. Over 80% of its revenue came from Chinese customers. After U.S. sanctions limited access to American suppliers, Chinese customers turned to local companies like SMIC. This has led SMIC to anticipate a 5% to 7% revenue increase in the second quarter due to strong demand. China, which consumes nearly 50% of the world's semiconductors, is the largest assembly market for consumer devices. Therefore, the semiconductor industry is a top priority for the Chinese government, and they are committed to ensuring self-reliance in microchips. SMIC is key to Beijing's plan to reduce reliance on foreign technology in its semiconductor industry as the U.S. continues to limit China's tech capabilities. To support local manufacturing, Beijing has invested billions of yuan in subsidies for its chip companies. Since 2020, SMIC has been under U.S. sanctions, requiring American businesses to get a license before selling to SMIC, limiting its access to certain U.S. technologies. The U.S. has also pressured allies like South Korea and Japan not to sell advanced chips to China. Additionally, the U.S. has restricted Dutch company ASML from selling ultraviolet lithography machines, essential for making chips, to China. ASML is the only company in the world that makes this equipment. Without these machines, SMIC cannot produce advanced semiconductors efficiently and cheaply. Moreover, the U.S. wants the Dutch government to stop ASML from servicing and repairing chip-making equipment sold to Chinese customers. This means the U.S. is asking a major company in an allied nation to break contracts to comply with U.S. policies. Despite these restrictions, SMIC has made significant progress in the chip-making industry. A teardown of Huawei's Mate 60 Pro smartphone launched last year showed it uses a 7-nanometer chip made by SMIC. The phone also supports 5G connectivity, despite U.S. efforts to block Huawei from accessing key technologies, including 5G chips. What surprises many is SSMIC's progress in technology despite U.S. blockades. SMIC has heavily invested to advance its technology to the 7 nanometer level and is now working on 5 nanometer and even 3 nanometer technology. ASML's CEO, Peter Wenink, predicted this a year ago. He warned that U.S. export controls could push China to develop its own advanced chip-making technology, and he was right. China has produced a 7NM chip for Huawei's latest phones and is now working on 5NM and 3NM chips. Even though U.S. sanctions caused SMIC's revenue to drop in 2023, the company continues to develop its 5 nanometers technology. SMIC is expanding production capacity for 7 nanometers and 5 nanometers chips, which will be used in future Huawei processors. Once these technologies reach high-volume production, 
SMIC's revenue is expected to grow again. Meanwhile, Huawei has become a leading AI company in China, building large language models and developing an analogy GPU similar to NVIDIA's A100. With the current GPU shortage, China's strong manufacturing could help address this issue. The launch of Huawei's Mate 60 Pro shows that U.S. sanctions have not succeeded in stopping China's progress. This is why NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, called Shenzhen-based Huawei a formidable competitor. The U.S.-China trade conflict has evolved over the past five years from a trade war to a cold war and now into a tech war, manifesting as an AI battleground. In 2021, Raimondo stated that the U.S. needs to work with Europe to slow China's innovation rate. Recent reports indicate that the U.S. government is contemplating additional export controls targeting AI hardware made by companies like NVIDIA, which play a vital role in AI model training and data center operations. Today, both China and the U.S. are fiercely competing for AI supremacy, with many of the sanctions on China designed to curb its innovation in AI. However, China does not seem far behind the U.S. Huawei, a company that manufactures GPUs and AI chips, is also developing large language models to compete with the likes of OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google. Other Chinese companies, such as Tencent and Alibaba, have already developed their own language models. Despite the sanctions, Chinese companies have been finding ways to obtain GPUs. The Financial Times reported that Chinese companies are accessing high-end U.S. chips through intermediaries, revealing potential loopholes in Washington's strategy to curb the sale or transfer of AI hardware to China. For instance, SenseTime, a firm blacklisted by the U.S., has been employing intermediaries to circumvent export controls. Additionally, reports suggest that certain Chinese AI companies are leveraging NVIDIA's processes via cloud servers located in different countries to navigate the restrictions. Moreover, chip makers such as AMD and NVIDIA are building modified versions of their products and shipping them to the Chinese market, which remains one of their largest. This further validates China's point that the sanctions have been ineffective. Furthermore, China consumes nearly 50% of the world's semiconductors as it is the biggest assembly market for consumer devices. Any restrictions prohibiting the sale of microchips to China, if implemented, would result in a significant loss of opportunities for the U.S. industry to compete and lead in one of the world's largest markets. This would undoubtedly impact the future of U.S. companies and their profits. The U.S. also exerts considerable pressure on its allies to align their policies and impose similar sanctions on targeted countries, thereby increasing the collective impact of economic and political pressure. However, this strategy could backfire, pushing its allies towards China, which presents itself as a friend to the global south. Huawei's substantial growth, China's economic advancements in AI and semiconductors, and China's growing global influence are indicators that the U.S. sanctions on China have been largely ineffective. Do you agree that the U.S. export control policy on China has backfired and made China more self-reliant in the semiconductor industry? Additionally, has the U.S. harmed its own reputation by imposing sanctions on China, signaling that any country or company could be sanctioned if they defy Washington? Share your thoughts and leave your comments below. If you like what you watch, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to show your support.